Hi everyone, Dom Femulara here, and I'm back at Mapex All Access. I, I really enjoy these, these different interview sessions that I do because I get a chance to meet so many great drummers, and I get a chance to really kind of learn a lot about our industry from people that I that I know so well, some people that I have just met, and some people that I haven't met before, but it allows me to kind of open up an entire opportunity of introducing these people to the world because we, this access goes on to Facebook, eventually it'll be on Mapex's YouTube channel. So we want you all to watch it, enjoy, and learn from these people. So I've got someone here that is fantastically talented. Aside from playing bass and keyboard and singing and playing phenomenal drums, coming from a family of drummer, this is incredible. Would you please welcome, and I'm going to bring her in now, would you please welcome Amber Baker. Here she is now. Thank you so much. What's going on? Good people. Thank you for joining me here. Absolutely. This is great, Amber. I get a chance to kind of have a wonderful conversation with people that are dedicated musicians mm -hmm. that are involved in the music industry. I know you live in Texas. Yes. And as I and I'm in New York right now on the on the north shore of Long Island. So oh, it's might, cold I, out there. This oh, it is cold. We've had now about a foot more of snow. Now, I don't know if you know what snow is in Texas. I'm from Kentucky. That's the thing. I'm from okay. Lexington, Kentucky. So we get the best of both worlds in <laughs> Kentucky. Now, since I've been here, though, snow is, that's, I don't know. That's like <laughs> every now and then, you know, we might see it a little bit. I'm sure every now and then you get a little bit of a dust. Just a, yeah, just a little sprinkle, like, you yeah. know. A dusting is not what you're used to in the past when you, I'm sure, when you were younger. Uh -huh. And as here in New York, for sure. So that's fantastic. Well, thanks again for joining me. You know, I got to start by saying, you know, you, you are an incredibly talented, wonderful, wonderful talent. I mean, aside from playing drums, you play keyboard, you play bass, you sing. I mean, you really have this incredible full array of being involved with music at such a high level. And that's just so fantastic. It's love. <laughs> Just, you know, just taking a piece and putting it everywhere, you know. Um, I, I will say, though, uh, growing up, you know, we was always like studio kids. Right. Yeah. So our dad was he was always working on some projects. So we got to see the in, inner piece of just everybody just doing something to create this great thing. Right. So in watching that process, I, I immediately fell in love with just the process of every piece of it like okay we have this section over here that's doing this all right let's get into that we got this section that that all the all the pieces of the puzzle i i'm i, I love it <laughs> that's it, it really got me into it well being influenced by your dad terry baker who was a yes. phenomenal artist he is a, a you know he's world renowned as a as a gospel artist he's played with the likes of everyone from Kirk Franklin to Michael McDonald. I mean, my gosh, you know, he really is such an incredible talent. Well, I want to get more involved with him, but let's go back to meeting stages. Having that influence in the household. Yes. How, how did you first get involved in music and what drew you to all these instruments? Uh, it was around the house. Um, he had, you know, just stuff from, you know, he would get something here and there and he would set something up. And I remember I would ask him, just all the time, like, you know, like that, when we gonna start lessons? Like, can you please give me a, a, a official lesson, you know? And he'd be like, okay, all right, I'm here, I, I got you. And nothing would ever happen. <laughs> but but the moral of the, the story, which is what I loved about how he kind of let me just be, right? It was like, it's around the house. If you want to pick it up, pick it up. Cause my mom played piano as well, oh, you know? So that was around the house too. So it was just like, it was more so one of those things of if this is what you want to do, I didn't force your hand. It's there. It's there for you to. It's there for you to. You know, take and do. So what? What a beautiful way to teach, to expose mm -hmm. you, and allow you to open yourself up to go to the direction that you want to go. That's actually. That's actually really, really, that was really. The, I think that was one of the best things he could have done for me. You know, just to let me be. <laughs> You know, boy, that's fantastic. So, you, so you're around the house. So, so there's a keyboard because your mom is playing. Exactly. There's drums all around the house because of your dad. Exactly. So you're you're kind of like a little kid in a candy store. Exactly. But look, check it out. Check it out. So then, not only that, 
my uncle plays bass, right? So his, my dad's brother plays bass. So he he just left one at the crib and was just like, <laughs> "We won't play it. Just <laughs> just pick it up. It's here." <laughs> so what what is what did you gravitate towards first? Drums, definitely. Drums. Why? That's, what, what do you figure? Uh. Between being influenced and I, I don't know, I just had a heart and passion for it. It was something, you know, a little easier. Of course, piano and, and bass, you have to use a little more thought as far as, you know, just being tonally correct and yeah. it's a yeah. lot of theory, music theory that goes into it. You know, you could just beat on the drums, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, little kid, you just, you know, ready to go. So the, it just worked out that I just, I, I focus, m- the bulk of my energy on drums to to start. Um, and then everything else was kind of just like for fun, you know? So even even still, like I only play those instruments to like do records or like to to piece something together, like I said. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's about bringing, bringing something to life, you know? Fantastic. So so you, you start playing drums and you're, 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 you're hopping on your dad's kit and, and uh, when, when you first got on, were you, were you comfortable on his drum set? No, nah, I probably couldn't reach too much. At a t- <laughs> <laughs> I was too small. I was like, you know, like, <laughs> all right, how how we how we get up here? But I was determined. I, I'll say that. <laughs> well, that's that's I a, was determined. That's a big part of uh, of the passion for music. When you're that determined, yeah. You, when there's a will, there's a way, and you there found the way for sure. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Also, church too. Church was a big part. Like everybody in in our family had their hands on something. They was playing something, singing, um, anything you name it. That was going on like within the family. And then, um, of course, you know, just growing up in church, we 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 grew up. It's it's two sides of it actually. So on one side of it, the Sabbath church that we was in. So on Saturdays, we were in church. And it was the more progressive, like we in there all day, but it's high energy, you know what I mean? And then the next day I would go to a Sunday church with the other side of the family. And it was like very conservative, very like one time I took a tambourine in there and it was like, it was almost like you out of order. But <laughs> <laughs> the 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 funny part about that is I was their first drummer at 10 years old. So yeah. I was able to introduce, you know kind of like what I was seeing both sides of my whole life, you know? So like I was able to bring that in um, comfortably, of course, because it was all family and, you know, they was ready for a change. So I was, I was able to be like the first drummer in in this, you know, more conservative Baptist church, like on Sundays, it was crazy. (laughs) How fantastic. So, so what kind of songs were you playing and what kind of songs were you learning? Uh, I was learning a bunch of gospel music. I'm not even gonna lie. I was I was learning like, um, I was I was learning gospel music. I was also learning a uh, a little bit of f- fusion stuff. I, as I got older, I, I kind of got into like a uh, uh, Dave Weckl and and uh, Snarky Puppy, yeah. um, just a bunch of like fusion stuff and that stuff like the time I, time signatures and stuff that was. That was really intriguing to me, so I, I got into a lot of that stuff. Um, of course, Vinny, Calahuda, like all all the goats, you know, as as we call them today. Um, I was getting into a lot of that, but I was I was definitely playing to a lot of like just gospel records. I was playing like Myron Butler, of course, Kurt Franklin, just because like my dad was playing, and I was just trying to trying to mimic, you know, what he was doing. But that's that's really how I learned. I was just trying to play records. Like, what they doing? Like, uh, okay, how would I play this if, if this was me on a? On well, a that, on. That, that's so amazing to be exposed, you know, through the church and the different churches that you were with, to be that young and that involved. So, you know, were there rehearsals that you had to go to? Was it? Was it? How were you learning all this music? Wow. So, really, there. Okay. So for um, this. Where I was going on Sundays, there was a there was a rehearsal once a week. Um, but like Saturday was that was 
everybody was all improv all in. They probably had rehearsals throughout the week, but you know, they would go through different musicians. That's how many how musical the church was. Like they could switch out people. It it'd be some like special occasions where it could be an 18 piece band, easy. You know, you got horns, you got wow. drummers, you got percussion, you got um multiple guitar players, you got multiple bass players, you got multiple keys. You got organ keys and probably somebody else just set up on the side for, for <laughs> some Oxford. You know what I'm saying? So like being around that, that, you know, that was just immense. And just to like be able to sit in or, you know, to be invited up because, you know, you just couldn't just step up and play. You had to be ready, you know, because yeah. to take on those type of services, it, it required it, it required a high skill level, I'll say. Yeah. So it it kind of pulled you up. You had to kind of get pulled up to that level of learning and uh, and make it happen. That exactly because you wanted to play. You you wanted to you know be recognized or you know just be in the mix in some way some somehow. So it's just like you had to go home and 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 shit to to even play the service you know or to, to be called up to be like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> How many how many songs did you play during a service? Oh, it just depends. I mean, a lot. I will say a lot. At least at least three devotionals, right? So you yeah. got three at the top of the service. Somebody gonna do a prayer song, right? Um, they might have testimony service. You might break out in five or six songs just off of how many people got a testimony. Wow. You know, um, but yeah. It was it was a lot, and then you know, of course, shout music. Like once once the praise break started, that you might lose five or six drummers off the praise break. You know what I mean? Like, cause cause they would go for a long time, but it was um, it's you know those experiences you can't you can't give money for. You know, they're they're so uh, heartfelt and they they hold such a special place. And um, you know, it's my childhood. That's my that's yeah. my com coming up. Well, it's it's interesting because you have this is I'm really seeing at several levels. You've got this incredible musical family mm -hmm. with your dad and your mom, and and of course your uncle. You've got this musical family. You're hearing music. You're involved with the church. So when did bass and keyboard kind of step in? Um, so that that stepped in when I got into production. So I think I was like. I might have been like 14 or 15 and I was like, I'm gonna save this money I'm making and I'm gonna buy me a Mac, right? So save the money I was making, I bought a Mac, got, you know, what I need, Logic or uh, and GarageBand at the time. Yeah. And, you know, I, I started ex experimenting with it and, you know, my, it, I was pulled towards those instruments because of my ear, like I was, experiment with ideas and, and those um, dolls, right? And uh, was like, okay, this needs this. So let me figure out how to play it, literally. Was like, let me figure out, or <laughs> I would sit at the keys and just mess around until something happened, you know? Which is, is really how I got into that, it was production. Brought all of that in. So you had to teach yourself, you know, whether it was GarageBand or whether it was, you know, Logic Pro, whatever. You had to sit down and learn that whole, you know, and that's a whole other learning curve. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I will say though, uh, I like to figure things out. You know, that's just the type of person I am. But once I got to a college, it was even easier because I had people around me that was experimenting with the same stuff, right? So. I'm watching how they're doing their sessions and picking up on shortcuts and ways to navigate and things that I could do that I didn't know I could do because I'm watching somebody else do it. Right. <laughs> so somebody that's, that's using the same stuff as me, you know, I'm, I'm like stealing all their hacks, right. <laughs> to get better at it. But, you know, and also, you know, my uncle, he's pretty savvy, which is kind of like computer stuff and, and, um, you know, all the all Pro Tools. I didn't get into Pro Tools till later. <laughs> but but Pro Tools, you know, so Logic, 
he learned because it was something new on the on the market at the time. Yeah. And so, you know, I if I needed to, I'd just be like, Aunt, how do you how do you say how do you copy and paste the thing from the, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had I had tremendous help everywhere, but you know, a lot of it was just me just like, oh, this is how you do that. That works. <laughs> Now, do you have any any siblings, brothers or sisters? Yes, I have a younger brother and a younger sister. Uh, my sister actually plays drums as well. Interesting. Um, yeah, my my brother though, he's on like he's on some real art artists, you know, like he uh he'll take his shoes and paint like something crazy on them, and that it's brand new shoe. You got a brand new pair of shoes, <laughs> <laughs> literally. But yeah, younger brother, younger, younger sister. And art, so art is in your family, whether it's painting, whether it's music. I mean, you've got this mm -hmm. creative, you're around this creativity all the time. Yes. So what, so so now, when, so specifically, were there any lessons that you took? Did you end up you know, taking some formal lessons? I took lessons for about a month. I didn't do well because I wanted to play record so bad that I wasn't trying to like get to the nitty gritty of like the, core stuff they were trying to teach. Yeah. Um, which I I don't know. I, I had to learn it sooner or later, right? Yeah. Um so in that month I kind of got like a uh insider of kind of what certain things were. And then yeah. you know in college I had to I had to <laughs> be on it. So um I think that's really where I was like challenged to be like Wow, you know all of this stuff, but you don't know this. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> let's 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 get it out. Like, let's encompass everything. Let's 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 put all this stuff together. You know. Well, I I, lo I love the fact that you you really are an extremely natural, you know, player. You kind of just kind of go totally with your gut and your instinct. Mm hmm. There's, there's something about that 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 really is is uh, I want everyone to to listen to and learn from because sometimes you know people get too involved in thinking about what they want to do and they they and they don't step back and say what feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think that's the whole preface of everything that I got into. Like, is does it feel does it feel right? Does it feel natural? Does it feel good? Like, because we can we can. Easily as musicians, you know, we get into all this technical stuff, right? And live by the book and but then we lose we lose like the uh just the natural feeling of of feel good, you know. We got yeah. natural we got natural endorphins that, that just kick us off, you know, and, and put us in the right space and, and in the right time. But I think, you know, I the way I came up and how I grew into this was that so it's just like i can practice technical stuff all day but yeah. when it comes to the situation let go you know and be in that moment because in music all we got is moments right so we gotta we gotta tailor to to that specific moment even if we if we mess it up we gotta keep going because we get another moment and however many minutes of that music we got you know what i mean so you gotta keep the pushing your wisdom and your understanding of being in the moment, you know, uh, totally uh, is uh, is you know from a an old soul. It's your your wisdom is much older than your age for sure. That's really really fantastic, and it is just that we only own the moment, we only own it now, mm -hmm. and music happens in that moment, and staying focused on that moment. Charlie Parker, the great alto sax jazz player. Mm -hmm several of his books would talk about how he would practice nonstop all day and and just practice to just get his chops together. And then as soon as he put one foot up on that stage, he forgot it all. He didn't think about it. He just played what he felt at that moment. And all those skills eventually kicked into the to the process here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. So you took some lessons, you, you, you get involved, you're playing. So when was the first professional situation that you were in that you started playing and and focusing on the bigger picture of music? That is a great question. I don't know. I feel like I had just a bunch of practice runs and and um, 
you know, because any and everything that I could be on, I, I was I was down because I just wanted to get my you know feet wet or or you know I just wanted to to be going. But uh, I think school school definitely college. You know, it just it was a it was a light on basically like there are a lot of other people out here that are doing some crazy stuff. Like, you know, you got to stay in the shed. Yeah. Um, but as far as a, a professional situation, um, matter of fact, when I was in college, uh, I did the Latin Grammys. I think it was like 2013. Oh, wow. With Alejandro Sanz. And it was such an eye opener for me because it was just like, it happened randomly, one. But two, it you know, just being on that stage with that many people and, and the production being that large and, and like them just really being like, okay, you gotta be on it. All right, here's your ears, here's your, you know what I'm saying? Like the click <laughs> about to start, we about to roll, like I need you, I need you here with us. So um it was nerve wracking, but it um it definitely, you know, just sparked some energy of like, okay, I, I should be doing more stuff like this. Um, so after that, I um, I wanted to do a tour so bad, and I just kind of was put my energy towards like, let me just let me just focus in and be doing all of this stuff towards like playing somebody's gig or playing a tour, right? So that happens and I'm, I'm, you know, just taking the precautions and I'm just, I, I got, I think I got in a funk about it. Cause I felt like I was like, I was the only one in my circle of people that hadn't had that experience. Right. Yeah. And out of nowhere, um, I get hit by a manager for a unknown mortal orchestra. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> they're like, Hey, we think you're the perfect fit for the job. Can you make it out to, or can you do some audition videos? Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right. So I send it, you know, not really thinking too much into it because I don't want to gas myself up where, you know, um downplay myself, you know, either either way, I didn't want to take it either way. So I just, you know, I just kind of did it, sent it off. It was like, all right, they want to fly you in. Uh can <laughs> you do rehearsal <laughs> this date to this date? I was like, yeah, I'm not doing. I'm not doing anything. And from there, we, I think, like the second date we did was like Canada or something. It was just like immediately just moving. Like literally every other day, we was in a different spot, and that was literally what I was trying to manifest. You know, all this time, and I had been in a funk about it, and got out there and, and did that. Hey, Amber, this at this point. This is when you have to put your big girl pants on. You hear me? All right. <laughs> this is when, okay, now we're getting serious. Let's yeah. you know, crank this up to a higher level. Exactly. Exactly. But I, I love that gig too because um I we were playing rock music, but I felt like I could be myself. You know what I mean? They they gave me room to to do me and and you know bring the gospel stuff in occasionally, you know, just I would hint at certain things every now and then. And, yeah. you know, I was calling it rock and soul. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I, I that's how I looked at it. But it was super fun. You know, yeah. Yeah. we had great times. It, it was a great, you know, traveling experience. All that stuff was amazing. Well, it's kind of interesting when you start getting involved with uh, with traveling and you're in a different country. How'd you travel? We have, were you driving? Were you flying? What was the travel uh, like? Both, both, both. So definitely overseas um, flying, of course, but yeah. we would kind of get to a central area and then drive, you know, to to whatever spots was. They had a van and, you know, stuff like that. But, yeah, it was, did, it was fun. We did both. Did you have equipment that was you know, set up for you or were you carrying gear around? Uh, that's what I'm saying. So when we were driving, we, we actually had – the trailer, like we had all the gear, so it was the same setup every night. You know what I mean? Um, we had we had everything pretty much to the T how we was gonna have it, unless you know we were like I said, we were flying flying out somewhere. Boy, how 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 you know, when, when you think about just what that takes now, all of a sudden, so who else was in the band? Were you the only girl in the band? Were there other? I was the only girl in the band, which was the. 
fun part because I always got my own room. <laughs> <laughs> Never had a roommate on tour. I was, I always had my own room because I was only here. <laughs> Boy, there's some real advantages to being the only girl in the band. Right, That's but cool. but um, yeah, it was it was a guitar and main vocalist, so he played guitar as well. Um, bass, keys, and me, and occasionally, like depending on the city, we might have some background vocals or we might have some percussion players. Which playing with the percussion percussion players is always the the funnest experience, just because yeah. you know you got somebody to to be throwing throwing a throwing side eyes too and you know just having fun with it. But yeah, so it was it was just a four piece. Um pretty simple, but you know, we made it happen. It was it was nice. And you were working it every day. Well this is so great. You know, we have Several people that are joining us in uh, and they're listening to us here. We've got, we've, got, we've got tons of people listening from all around the world. Wow. From Mexico, from Russia, from all around the States. I mean, it's really kind of interesting to see we have here. And we've got people like, check this out. Here's, um, here's. Uh, oh, wow. Shanika, <laughs> who says that's brilliant. Thank you, Shanika, for joining us. Thank you so much. And she talks about over here, the natural rhythm, which is really kind of what this is all about. You know, mm -hmm. Kind of gives us this natural rhythm. Here's a phenomenal drummer from uh, the Miami area. His name is Carlos Gutzman, a, a dear, dear friend, and mm -hmm. he's a phenomenal drummer himself. But he also is a um, a, a great drum tech and production manager for the BGS. They do their their, their world tour for, for you know, you know, and uh, and he also is a drum tech for many mm -hmm. named drummers. For example, like you know Max Weinberg and different type of people. He said, "Hi, oh, Amber." Wow. Can you tell us about a career highlight that made you realize that the music business was for you? Was there any point that Amber you felt like you know I'm I'm doing this man I'm in it this is this is what I need to be doing? I think honestly that that tour set me off with with UMO that was like the icing on the cake it just felt it felt natural to be there one and it it just the energy every night was top notch. You know, like it's so it was incredible feeling and it was overwhelming feeling at times because it was just, you know, of course, I'm humbled just to be around. Right. Yeah. Um, and that you guys randomly find me on Instagram. Right. And, and call me to do the gig. Like that's literally how that happened. So um, <laughs> I'm serious. So so to to have that, you know. See to see kind of the the responses of just being out there. Um, I think I think that was huge. And then you know running into we were doing festivals where we were running into people that I admired so much. You know, yeah, so yeah. I was able to sit down with with a lot of people that you know I was looking up to to say what's up. Which that's huge. You know, for for I think for anybody that that you know. Wants to take their gift and and, and kind of regive yeah. in some some sort of way. So being able to 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 shake hands with these people and, and say what's up, or you know, just to make somebody smile. You know, I might have did something silly on stage, and you know, we all laughing on stage. <laughs> so they laughing, you know, in the crowd. So that is, you know, well, I think I think that was a that was a definitely a, a point where i was just like yeah let's let's keep going with this <laughs> i like that thank you carlos thank you so much you know it's kind of interesting as people join us here so now i want to go back now you said you're on instagram what, what, what uh -huh. you're under instagram what's what's your instagram name lunar like the moon l-u-n-a-r ray and ray is a acronym for reaching authentic essence um it's literally just it's it's a motivation quote just to to always be true to yourself. Um, so Lunar Ray and then music. Lunar Ray music. Okay, here it is again. I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm following you here now. All right. Fantastic, man. So you got some good stuff here. So I want everyone to go to Lunar R A E. Lunar, so it's two R's L U N A R R A E music mm -hmm. on Instagram and follow her there, man. Sign up and follow her there because you'll see some already. I can just see some great stuff that you have on there, which is fantastic. Yes. So you have so interesting. So we've got a handful of different people here that have joined us here. This is uh, Andrew, who was a, a phenomenal drummer in the Boston oh, area, wow. who's taking yeah. some 
I lived in Boston for a minute. Oh, for a minute. All right, there it is. Yeah. Hey, Amber and Don, thanks for sharing this. That's great. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us. Let's see what we got here. That's love. Let's shoot here. If you can read that. Can you read that? Wait. You know that? Robert Hooks depends on what they need. They are versatile blues, jazz, contemporary uh -huh. compositions with brushes. And we held drum shed. Uh, all, look at this. This is fantastic. Wow. Nice. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. I mean, you can see how people are joining us in here. And just let's see what this is. Um, third generation drum, wonderful mind. Look at this. Here's here's Harry, Harry Blue. Oh, so third generation. Third generation wow. drum, wonderful mind. So you got people that are joining it from all over. Wow. The this is fantastic. It's fantastic. So so a couple That's of things. You, so when you rec if you record something. Mm -hmm. You'll lay the tracks down individually, so you'll play the bass part and the keyboard part and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so usually I'll just, I'll like, honestly, it all, it still starts with drums. So I program drums first. And then from there, you know, I'll, I'll kind of move around. But, I mean, you know, each each thing is different. Each thing is yeah. different. Sometimes I might have a vocal to play with. Sometimes I might have something, and I just, but, you know, it always, it always feels like I'm going somewhere if I lay the drum track, right? So yeah, we'll we'll do some sequence. We'll do a sequence drum, right? And then you know we'll get the bass. That's gonna make the bass feel better if I got the drums already set, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you know we'll figure out the chorus structure, whatever. Go through that, and then we bring it here, and we put we we live. We put the live drums on it. We 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 moving and grooving at that <laughs> point. <laughs> So again, you'll, so you'll record each part. So you're playing all the parts then, right? You're, you're doing a lot of all definitely, of it. definitely. Usually, I usually I kind of get the the grounds of it to get the feeling of where I'm I'm going with it, and then I'll probably send it out to people that I feel are more, you know, more more, uh, you know, they got the language down better, and they yeah. can express, you know, better what I was trying to say. Like yeah, they yeah. they have the essence of it now, so you know, we ship it out and then do it that way. Well, that's great that you kind of see it that way. You know, it's really kind of takes that level of, of musical expertise, mm -hmm. and you know, once you kind of get the the foundation of it down, but that really is kind of it's it's an interesting process. Here, this is a drummer, Bruno Muse, who's a phenomenal drummer in Belgium. He lives in Antwerp, Belgium. Wow. You know, Mapex, the Everest of drum. He's a Mapex artist in in Belgium, and uh, yes, great, great guy. And uh, and I know you. Um, so you play Mapex, you play the, the Armory series, right? Mm-hmm. And what is it that you like about the drums? What, what is it that that makes it right for you? They sound amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, we, I mean, we don't even have to discuss that part. They sound amazing. <laughs> These shells are beautiful. First of all, they're beautiful. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. Just so y'all can see it. Oh, how great, right? Beautiful. They look they look beautiful. But they also sound beautiful, you know what I mean? So, I mean, if they sound good, I, yeah, it, I don't it, have it, no other choice but to play, but to play them, right? It, it makes it real easy when they sound good the way they always do it. Exactly. And, and Mapix, all the lines, whether it's the Armory or the Saturn or the Design Lab, they really, you know, all of the, each line is just so clean and just such great sounding. Yes, very clean. And they cut well. They they record very well. I've yeah. I have used them on some records, and I I'm satisfied. <laughs> Boy, good for you, man. I think what's what's interesting too is that the you know we got to kind of step into the world of music. We have to surround ourselves with gear that mm -hmm. inspires us. Very true. Very true. And that's a, a very, very big part of it. So talk about, about some of the artists. Like you had mentioned names like Dave Weckl and Vincent mm -hmm. Yuta, and uh, like even the guys from Starkey Puppy, Larnell Lewis. Yep, Sput, Robert Sput C. Wright. Sput um, C. Wright, who I, I, I was just with him this past January in Vancouver. What a great musician he is. He really is. Amazing, honestly. And, you know, I'm left-handed as well. I just play right-handed, so... Watching him out, you know, like part of me was mad that I converted to right hand, you know, but just out of, you know, I was just watching what was in front of me. Right. So my dad was playing right handed. So I was like, OK, this is natural. But I don't know. I, I wish I would have honed in on the openness, you know, 
Well, wh- why wh- why can't you try it and, and and do some of it? I mean, I might, I might, I just you know. <laughs> How familiar are you with the drummer Billy Cobham? What? You want to talk about Maha Vi- uh, Maha Vishnu? Yeah, let's go, let's go. Billy Cobham. He was going was, crazy. He was the first one to play in this open-handed way of playing. Mm-hmm. Now, Billy is a natural right-handed person. What? Billy is a natural right-handed person who lowered his hi-hat and started playing open because he felt that the concept of crossing just did not work well for him. That's crazy. I did. Yeah. You just taught me something. I didn't even know that. Oh, he, he just he just lowered the hi-hat and started playing this way with his left hand and just developed his left hand to a high level that he is a natural righty what? playing open-handed drumming. Wow. So you're a, you're a natural lefty, right? Yeah, I'm a natural lefty. When Any, you, when I was you, about to say, anything you put in my hand, I'm going to put it towards the left side. It, boy, this is it. Boy, you, you're, hey, listen, you're a natural to do this. When you kick a ball, what ball do you kick it with? My left. You're, you're left. So your left is just... So your right foot, you developed on your bass drum to yeah. play right footed, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, have, do you play a double pedal? Mm-mm. No. I want you to get a double pedal. All right. I want you to get a double pedal, and I want you to set it up and start to see what your left foot could do on that double pedal. Because I'm interested in knowing. That's a that's a you on to something. No, I, I I know what I'm on to. I've been I've been teaching drums for. 50 years, and when I see someone like yourself who's naturally talented with this incredible gift of music coming from the family that you came from, and the fact that you're a natural lefty playing a righty kit, oh man, you've got the best <laughs> of everything going on. Wow. Really, really. So, what I want you to do is I want you to try and lower your hi hat at some point uh-huh. and just start playing left hand on the hi hat and just start grooving with certain certain different beats yeah. and ideas and experimenting. See, the only thing is I I got to get my my ghost, my ghost and right in my right hand. See, cuz you know what I'm saying the ghost notes come natural in the left hand, so when I open up, I'm going to have to get my right hand together. Absolutely. And one of the things you can do is Mapex makes a great X hat where you can put a high hat to your right. Okay. So and it's, and it's closed you got uh-huh. your hat to your left. So when you want to do some of that ghost note, you can l- still lead right-handed and uh-huh. let your left hand do the ghost notes and then go back to your left hand on the hi-hat. Oh, man, we're going to hook you okay. up. Okay, let's go. Let's we're go. Gonna, we, we're going to hook we you ready. up. We're ready. We're more than ready. This is really where the creative process comes in. Yes, absolutely. And Cobham was the first one to start to do this. And when Billy did this, it opened up a whole other world of options where now when you have the freedom of your left hand on that hi-hat, your right hand can move around to your drums and open up all new options of grooves and beats and fills. Yeah, I need to do that. That gets stopped because of the cross-handed playing. Uh-huh. And listen, the second person that really kind of started to take this to the next level was Simon Phillips. Mm. Simon Phillips is a natural right-handed person who plays open-handed. Wow. Never Very, knew this. I never knew this information. <laughs> now, interesting, Carter Beaufort. He's left-handed. Or he's is he left, right-handed? He's left oh, I was about to. I thought she was going to trick me up on that no, one. <laughs> he's, a, he's a natural lefty, but he kicks with his right foot. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he's kind of right-footed, left-handed. And what's interesting is, I mean, he's just an extre- extremely... Natural player, but he was very influenced when he heard Billy Cobham play. So he didn't—he didn't think about cross-handed. He just said, "I'm going to play open because that's the way Billy plays." It just so happened that he's a lefty, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you've got some fantastic advantages in that's... front of you that could open up a whole other world of experimentation. Yeah, I'm about to practice when we get off this. Uh, get off this live. <laughs> I'm about to get back in the shed. I'm about to figure it out. Oh, man. So tell me more about some of your influences. So you listen to, to Starkey Puppy and, and uh, 
and Robert, it's a phenomenal player. Uh, Chris Dave, of course. Um, Chris Dave, what another great, great player. Man, um, let's see. It's, it's so many. Of course, of course, my pops, he's foundation for me. Terry Baker, I have to say yeah, his name, just yeah. in case I didn't know. Um, it's so crazy because of the way my family set up. Alan Mapson is a cousin of mine. He played with, with Bashan Mitchell um, for a minute, but he, uh, like, he taught me my first rudiment and everything. So he's yeah. he's a he's a powerhouse all by himself. You know what I mean? He's he's yeah. somebody that that's probably not on the on the spectrum that he should be, but he's definitely been super influential in a lot of my plan. Um, even to to like people my age, uh, we got Mike Mitchell, we got um, Cleon Edwards, we got um, yeah. it's it's a slew of people. I don't I really don't even want to like miss miss nobody um, <laughs> for real. Um, I remember too listening to uh, Rasheed Williams on a on a common gig, which was. Crazy experience. What a great drummer, right? Rashid is crazy one. experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I mean, my list is is full. Uh uh Carter Buford, he's at he's actually on that list. Um Will Kennedy. It's you know, it's a wide range. And Will Kennedy, Will Kennedy, remember, Will Kennedy is a natural lefty. Yep. But he plays open-handed. He plays open, exactly. All of these people, um, yeah, I, it's a it's it's such a wide range. It's like I'm going to blank out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm looking okay. at some more more people that are joining us in. Uh, Andy, okay, which is so great. Let's look at this. Um, uh, here's um, Tyler Mayfield, Matrix Strum, the way What's to up, go. Tyler? Blank period. <laughs> he know. Thanks, That's family out there. What's <laughs> going on? Oh, that is fantastic. You know. uh, here's Sean Preston. Uh -huh. Yes, they do. Most bang for the buck in the business. They give you the highest level of quality for what you invest. Good point. Very, very good point. That's good. So are there any other things? So you got the the uh, the armory kit. Anything that more that you added there? Did you add any different? Uh... No, I think this was this was pretty pretty standard um 22 uh 10 12 14 16 and then it came with the uh uh what was it the the tom what's the snare comes with i think it's tom somebody yeah i don't i don't remember what the army comes up with but it was oh, listen the mapex snare line the black panther snare line oh trust me that metallic Oh we, I played on the go when that I wanted to keep it. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. So so if y'all want to send me one back, <laughs> the brass I, one. I I hear the Mapex there. I want to have a relationship with it. <laughs> no, that one is crazy. It's crazy. It's yeah. it's it's literally. And we didn't even we didn't even um I don't even think we put a head on it. There it is. Yep, the tomahawk. Yep, I got that one. Frank Perry, who's another phenomenally dedicated Mapex artist, yes. who's a dear friend of mine and, a, and uh, was a student of mine for many, many years and teaching on his own, performing on his own, yes. he's got his own studio set up. He knows Mapex, tomahawk snare. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> that's, so much. that's the one. I'm sorry it, it, it left me for a second, but that's definitely the one. And look at this, Mark Bennett. Look, from oh, yeah. <laughs> He jumped on it too, Tomahawk. Mark, thank you Mark, so much. Mark He's definitely know up. what's up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So the Tomahawk, yeah. so so with that, and it's got such a killer sound, and I, again, mm -hmm. the price point of what Mapex does. Listen, it yes. really is pretty powerful to have that level of understanding of, of such a quality product of what yes. Mapex delivers. It's pretty amazing. Yes. I mean, it's it's been amazing though. I mean, I if I like go back and think about like the Black Panther stuff, then yeah. you yeah. know, like probably 10, 10, 15 years back, like that was something that that was a staple, you know, that most drummers just had around. Like, yeah, yeah, they had they had a Black Panther somewhere. 
just wait. <laughs> I, I have been playing Mapex for probably over 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they always have impressed me with their forward thinking, Amber. Yes. This, that to me is something which really, and you get people like Jeff Mulvihill, you get people like Mark Bennett, you get people like you know Rick DeYoung, and then you get the, the minds of other drummers like Russ Miller, Yes, comes up with the ideas of the design lab. I mean, this is like these these are these are really creative. I, I can't even lie to you. I'm super excited for. I've been looking at like the snaps of even the um, the new drums that they're about to to put out. Of course, but yeah. how they're doing the time mounts, the thin the thin line that is so you, it's just appealing. Like it's I love that. <laughs> it just looks aesthetically pleasing, you know what I mean? So it's just like, okay, y'all, 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 y'all up to something now. <laughs> y'all doing something. <laughs> Amber, I love your enthusiasm and your dedication to music. And you know, we got to talk about your dad. Your, your dad Absolutely. is your dad is such an articulate professional. Mm -hmm. you know, how he speaks and and just how he explains things and just what I've seen of your dad. And of course, as a player, he's creative not only on, on just acoustic drums, but electronic drums. I mean, he really kind of gets oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. He oh, knows yeah. the name when it comes down to all of that stuff. Yeah. He's, uh, he, you know, he's been around. He's he's done his due dil diligence, you know, to, yeah. to figure that he's got this stuff down to a science. Yeah. Like, literally... Even when I was setting setting these up, I think I was turning something. And I was like, "How do you get your so and so to sound like that?" Like, he just understands. Okay, I'm gonna put this head with this head, even if I don't have this head. This yeah. to make sure if we gonna do this, we're gonna do that. But you know, I I just think he's just been around long enough to to really figure it out, and he was dedicated to it enough to really put it together and make it all make sense. I mean, session drummers top and i'm not just saying it because it's my dad like he <laughs> you, he, he 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 got it you know naturally he was he was really uh i think he um he had just you know put so much time and effort towards just doing this specific thing that it it shaped him to be one of the best simply put well, I, I tell you, here, here's a here's a a great line. Nothing to mess with. That's good. That's a good one. Okay, thank you so much. That's point well taken. Definitely, but yeah, he he um he said he said a lot of the songs. So it's just it's part of the reason I can't have step, you know. And I think part of the reason why I I delved into some other instruments so I could be just a little more burst somewhere else. Yeah. But I mean, it works hand in hand because, you know, we work together often, you know? Yeah. He trusts me, I trust, of course I trust him. Um, You know, he, he lets me be creative and, you know, without being like, you know, you gotta do it this way because I'm your dad. Like, you know, it's like, okay, all right, let's do that, but let's do it like this. Or, or what if we, if we're gonna do that, then let's, Offset this portion of it, you know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we, we, we got it down. <laughs> you sure do. Well, that's that's my that's my folks. That's, I love them to death. That's my twin. Well, that's the power. <laughs> that's the power of having a family like you have, which is a beautiful, loving family that's involved with music, that is a spiritually moved to be involved with the church and do many many different things where you're inspiring other people. And like I said, with your dad, he's such a such a great a great guy and and really i think what's amazing is that as they say the apple does not fall too far from the tree right <laughs> i mean how you are and how you handle yourself and how articulate and how loving you are is really kind of comes back you can see the the family that you grew up with and uh absolutely and that, that's influential at many levels absolutely absolutely you know yeah. We're here. <laughs> yeah, I, you're there for sure. Well, I'll tell you something, Amber. It, it's so great to have this time with you. And, uh, you know, with you know, Mapex allows me to have this this time on, on Mondays to uh, to bring people in and kind of just expose them to different people. And what we do is 
it's really a matter of people getting to know you, mm -hmm. getting to know your music. Now, you know, how else can they check it down? So Instagram. All right, so check it out. Since we talk about music, yeah, now we got a few minutes, right? Yeah. Um, I am releasing a single on the thirty first of December, so that's next Thursday. A couple of weeks next Thursday, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be under the Lona Ray brand. Um, yeah, so be looking out for that. Definitely tell there, your is friends. There, is there a website they can track it down, or is it on yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, of course, be watching my Instagram, um, but it def it'll definitely be loaded on the website as well. Uh, Luna Ray Music, same as the Instagram ha handle dot com. Okay. So again, very, yes, Luna Ray, L U N A R R A E. So there's two R's, R A E yeah. Music dot com. It'll be there, so people can go and they can they can purchase the song there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let's get everyone to go there. I want everyone that's listening to my voice. And even though it's live right now, when this goes back onto Facebook and pops up all over the place, and this will eventually be on the Mapex YouTube channel. Yes. Anyone that's hearing this, even if it's not live, it's as we are you know, being recorded. Yeah. Go to the website. Go to the website. You can you can see it's still old stuff. You can go ahead and if you ain't hip already, so you can get it, get a taste of what's about to happen. Nice. We we gonna get the two point though next next week. <laughs> oh, on the thirty first. We're good. Thirty first. Yes. It's so fantastic. And in the song, what can they expect in the song? What? How would you describe it? Uh, I mean, they can they can expect to groove into the new year. Of course, <laughs> that it's only right. It's it's only right that you, that you get a two step in into the new year. So, fantastic. you know, we we've had a year so. Y'all deserve a dance, two-step. It's been kind of a crazy year. I know with this pandemic, and uh, I'm not sure how Texas is doing with, uh, are you in lockdown at all, or are you? Uh... Texas is, is pretty live. I, I, I can't lie. It's, they're pretty live. I mean, of course, they there are, you know, certain things that are set in place, but, you know, they they we're doing live music again. It's, it's a lot of stuff going on, so. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great to hear. Well, I look forward at some point to hearing you play live. I Absolutely. look forward to tracking down the music. I'm going to go down there and track down the song on lunarraymusic.com. Yes. They can also track you down again on your Instagram page, Lunar Ray Music mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. And anybody that is involved that wants to get involved with what Amber is doing, you guys can track her down that way. And for your dad, how can they track down your dad's stuff? What, what, what's his name? Um, so his handle on Instagram is Baker T R one. Baker T R one. Yeah, Baker, mm -hmm. yeah, Baker T R one. Fantastic. Yeah. On Instagram. Other than that, he's not he's not too social on the sites. <laughs> well, we'll check him down on Instagram. I'm gonna yeah, go there. yeah, get him on Instagram now. And follow him, and I'd love someday to mm -hmm. have some time with him too. He's you guys person. actually posted a video he did recently. Um, I think on your, on you guys' Facebook page, which was a. Uh, yeah, y'all can, y'all can, y'all can go to, first of all, go to Mapex drums. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go there. But yeah, I think you guys reposted one of his videos recently. So, um, it's from Instagram, but it's on Facebook. So, well, that's fantastic. Well, I'm going to track down Terry also at the end of the future too. I'm going to, I'm going to grab some of his time also, but Amber, I must tell you, it has been an absolute pleasure to have some time with you. Absolutely. As meet all these young, new next generation players. You have an incredible spirit. You've got an incredible musical heritage. And as I said, the lineage that you come from your family with your mom on keys, your dad on drums, and your family playing, and you playing <laughs> drums and bass and singing and keyboard, you're doing it all there too. Boy, keep this all going. I wish you the best of luck in everything that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been a, my absolute pleasure just to be here, honestly. It's been too much fun with you, Don. No oh, man, thank you so much. And well, you know, we we are, are completely honored to have you here with us too. We'll bring you back too, man. There's some more stuff when the, the song comes out. I want to have you back again and uh, okay and, and play some of that for everybody. This is fantastic. So keep on going strong, stay safe, have a wonderful holiday and thank a happy so and healthy 2021. Stay safe and Amber. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Same to you. Y'all be good. We'll see you soon. Thank you <laughs> All so right. much. All righty. Hang on one second.